Hi friends. Have you ever worried about what to price your services or your product? I know I have. I used to spend days mulling over what I should charge. I didn't want to price myself too low and be working for free, but I also didn't want to price myself too high and no one buys. And after I finally set on a price, that dreaded discovery call would come making me worried all over again to just say the price to that actual client. There were times where I hid behind sending a custom proposal just to dodge having to say the price. I also tried asking what the person's budget was and just match that and even offering a low cost initiation entry level fee in hopes that the client would want to continue and buy more services to get the fee that I know I should have charged to begin with. But none of that worked. I ended up working for free and it just resulted in me doing more work and not doing less. I am Shanice Miller, and welcome to my podcast, Do Less. Yes, that's right, Do Less. It used to be cool to work 60 hours a week, but the world has gotten smarter and realized why spend more time to make the same or less money. I help small business owners build systems and processes to help them scale and find more time for themselves and their families. I'm going to provide you the best practices and all the tools and tips to scale your business. Welcome to my show. Today, I'm bringing Jen on the show to share her experience with pricing her services. Jen is the owner of Assigned Financial Solutions, a CFO and bookkeeping firm that helps visionary CEOs make financial decisions simple and stress-free. Jen is all about the numbers, which is why I wanted her to share her journey with you. Jen, I am so glad that you're on the show today. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me, Shanice. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So I'm going to just jump right in. What was your experience like the first time you tried to price your services? Well, it was basically, I was on a discovery call and I asked them what their budget was. That's how I priced my very first client ever. And they said, this is my budget. And I said, okay, that's great. We'll do it. And it was about, it's, it's actually embarrassing, but I'll be very upfront. I'm transparent. It was about $75 per month for like full bookkeeping. Wow. I yes. wish I was that person. <laughs> if you, I could yes. get $75 per month for full bookkeeping, that is amazing. Yes. And it was because in my mind, I needed to, I came, that was like my background was um, accounting, but taking it on yourself, being your own business owner, it felt very different. And I needed that experience. So I thought whatever person comes to me, I'm going to take and whatever they can pay me, I'm going to take. And that may have lasted for about four clients. And then I realized, oh, I cannot continue on this way. I would never advise my clients to do that. So how did it feel when you took that $75 for the month of bookkeeping? For the month of bookkeeping. Um, it actually, it felt nice because I was getting paid. I wasn't doing it for free, which if they would have said zero, I may have done it for zero. Who knows? Because <laughs> I wanted that experience of the communication back and forth and really being in somebody else's QuickBooks file. You know, like I needed that whole experience to feel comfortable pricing further. I very quickly, like I said, realized I can't run off of other people's budgets. And I worked with increasing those clients over the next couple of months um, that I took on. So that was what, nice. They, what made you realize that you couldn't do the other people's budgets? Um, well, there was no way for me to be profitable that way. I was putting a lot of time in and getting very little money back. How much time um, did you have to put in for that $75 per month? So a normal month of bookkeeping for me is about two and a half to three and a half hours. Wow. That's not going to pay anybody's bills as an entrepreneur. So like 20 something ish an hour that's you were putting in yeah. as a bookkeeper mm -hmm. per client. Yes. Per client. And I mean, that's. That might be the, that was probably the high end, honestly, because there was the, that doesn't include our, our monthly call and things of that. So probably more like four hours total, I would say. Okay. So about to, I think it, I figured it out. It was like $16 an hour. 
Wow. Um, so when yeah. you did that actual math, because a lot of people aren't doing the math, they're not saying yes. like, you know, what is it that I'm actually making per client when I'm putting in all of the hours that I'm doing? I, I see a lot of people, they're not tracking their time. They're not seeing how much they're just saying, okay, I'm getting this amount and that's ha I'm happy with that. But if you're not really knowing your expenses, you're not really knowing how many hours you're putting in, you, you don't really know exactly what you're making or if you're even profitable. You could be running a business and being not profitable at all. And I see that a lot. So when you, what made you say, okay, this isn't working, it's not profitable. What was that turning point for you? Honestly, so I am a huge proponent for profit first. I don't know if you've ever read it, okay? But I read profit first before I started my business. Mm. And I knew I always wanted to run the system. So my very first client, I ran that system and I wasn't able to make all of the allocations. And I thought, oh, well, this is a problem. <laughs> which obviously I knew it was going to be for that very first client. And now, even why though was the, it a problem that you weren't able to make all the allocations? Well, so with profit first, you take that $75 and you break it into percentages. So 50% would be owner's draw, 30% would be your expenses and then taxes and then a profit account. I was putting all of my expenses of that $75 all of the $75 was going to owner's expenses. I wasn't able to actually bring home any money. So that's a, that's a problem. <laughs> How long would you have been able to keep running on that problem? <laughs> um, not long at all. The runway was very, so I call the, the time your business has saved up a runway and the runway was very short, like a week. <laughs> it was terrible. You know, I think a lot of the business owners, I have a spouse and he was providing. This was like me saying, I want to do something with my education. It was COVID. I had come out of the public schools because I was also an, uh, an educator and I didn't feel a lot of pressure at that point, mm -hmm. but I'm a numbers person. So when the numbers weren't adding up, I was like, okay, I'm going to make the change. And it started really, really slow. Again, it was just like, I took that $75 person and I said, next year, your pricing is going to be $30 increase. So it was very slow, but anybody knew coming on, I had a set package and was able to convey that and feel very confident in that number that I was presenting. Okay. So I, I was hearing that it wasn't such a big deal because it was like my lifestyle, how I was living wasn't necessarily dependent on that income that you were coming in. So, you know, why start the business? I'll start there. Oh, that's, that's a great question. Well, I started the business because just because my, we weren't dependent on it, that was like our truly our lifestyle money, like what we wanted to do, our freedom, paying off some debt. Like my income was always been that. But I also was like, I love working with businesses. So I worked in education. I take that education and teach, I teach business owners about their finances. So there's like this amazing, like combination of my skills and it feels so good to be able to do that. So that's, that's really why I started it during COVID. The public school system shut down. My boys were home for virtual learning for a year and a half. And I said, you know what, I'm going to do it now. So I did it. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you jumped out there, took that leap, yep. decided not to be afraid anymore <laughs> because that's a big thing is like that fear of leaving your check, that fear of, because you're actually having an income, a steady income that you are yes. using for the lifestyle. And now you're trading it in for the unknown. Oh, yes. I see some uh, pain there. How, <laughs> what did that feel like? <laughs> It was, oh, a hundred percent fear. I didn't know how it was going to actually go. Um, and you take that first client and you're like, okay, I got this client $75 or not. And you're excited. I don't know. It, it was just this very weird feeling, but never was I so afraid of doing it. I knew it would work out. I don't know why I knew it would work out. I just did. I was like, it's going to work out. Now, was that $16, was that the equivalent of what you were making at the, in the educational system? Sure. 
Yes, that was probably very similar. Yeah, okay. because I was a paraprofessional there. Um, I worked in special education. So I was an assistant and loved that job. But I would say it was very similar, but I wasn't getting paid for just like three hours, right? Or four yeah. hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same because usually like if you're trying to logically say it in your mind, like, okay, well, I am getting paid the same amount, even though like I'm getting paid steady hours. I'm able to stay at home. I'm doing my own thing. I'm my own boss. And so it kind of like, it works for a little bit until it does not. Like you said, when you got to the four clients and you're just like, this is not sustainable because I'm trying to do profit first on myself and it's not Mm -hmm. even working for me. So how was it making that shift to actually pricing your services better? What were you, what did you do to try and fix it? Okay. So first I did chime track. I was like, what am I spending? How much time am I spending for these clients? So that was the first thing I did. Because at that point, you have a couple of clients. It feels very free. You can work whenever. You don't track all the email time. You don't track all the conversation time or, you know, whatever. So I did time track. That was my first step. And then I did research on value pricing because I knew I didn't want to work hourly. I wanted to be able to say, this is a consistent, almost retainer income I'm going to get because that felt comfortable to me. Now, did you get a coach to teach you about the value pricing or were you still trying to just do it on your own? No, no, I'm a do it yourself. I have taken help from other people um, recently because I felt that it was a the only way I was going to learn and get outside of what I knew was to hear other people's experience. But at that point, no, definitely not on, you know, $75 a month. I wasn't hiring a coach. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is like a very, because I hired a coach starting off and the coaches were there to kind of check me. And they were just like, you're pricing this way too low. You know, right. you and that's I think that's part of the benefit of a coach is there who's telling you like your services, your value that you have, this is what it's really worth, so that you can go out there, feel confident and command that. So I, I think we can really see like, okay, that that was the area I'm trying to DIY DIY it and I'm ended up getting paid low ball and not even paid. Right. <laughs> right. Amount, but just so excited that I got something my own. I did it on my own. <laughs> And you're, you're exactly right. Once I learned about the idea of a business coach or a consultant even coming into my business and looking at it, I was like, oh, I could see the benefit. I'm pretty, I see debt. I try to run a debt-free business. So there was the reason that I didn't really bring anybody in at that point. But at the same time, now that I work with bigger businesses, I can see how you can leverage debt to be a little bit of a tool for you, as long as there's a plan to pay it off. So I will say that too, like a coach early on and then understanding that you can leverage jet to be a working tool for you is huge mind shift change for me because I would have been like, never. (laughs) Yeah, I completely agree with that. I'm still not the biggest debt advocate type of person. I did hear you mention debt a couple of times. So when you made that switch, were you in a lot of debt? Because you said your money went to lifestyle and to paying the debt. No, just student loans. So it, we don't live a debt-free, well, we live a debt-free life outside of that student loan and a mortgage. And that was just important for me to pay off my student loans. Where, so I'm still there. I'm still working on it, but the business has never been in debt. So that's something I don't hang my hat on it by any means, but mm-hmm. I, I do try to make the wisest decisions with the business that I can. But the value pricing was so new to me, the idea of not working hourly, because that is just I don't know. That is what I grew up in. That's what I worked in. I, who knew that you could value price something. So learning about that, I read books, I read blogs. I, I probably did take a course, but never uh, had a coach come in and say, hey, Chen, open your eyes. <laughs> so what was that first value price point that you decided that you decided on or that you felt comfortable? Because those are two different things. Uh, what we decide on is our price and what we feel comfortable actually saying and like asking someone to give us can be two separate things. So that is such a good point because I, as I've raised my prices, I may have decided on something, but if I get on a call with a, a potential client, being able to say that number 
completely different. So yes. Um, so my very first value price was $200 per month for bookkeeping. And okay. it was, so that was a huge increase from what I was charging and knowing that the idea of hearing somebody say no because of that was also something you have to deal with. Like the idea of rejection. I was like, oh, that's cool. I, I can manage. So how did that was, feel to think that you might be rejected for saying your price? So I didn't have a problem with it until it actually happened. And mm-hmm. then I was kind of like, oh, again, I went back to wonder what their budget was because it was, <laughs> and then you really learn that sometimes people just say that and you, they don't even feel like you were a good fit. So there's mm-hmm. no reason to let it bother you. So I'm pretty much out of that phase now of if you, it's not a good fit or they say it's the price it doesn't matter. We just move on. And I've had a lot of people actually come back. Like once they've said no, they've come back and said, actually, I would really like to, to work with you. So. Okay. So you realize you're like, it is valuable. Just maybe not at that time for that person or sometimes the messaging, what I'm telling them, how, how I'm positioning what I'm saying. And that's all of the things that sometimes DIY, it's going to take you longer to get there and to understand and realize that. So now you're at this $200 per month level from Mm -hmm. $75. So about a 2.5, somewhere in that mix increase that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So now it sounds like a a, kind of a jump for joy. (laughs) How did you feel at that $200 per month level? And is that, was that getting you closer to where you want it to be? Absolutely. So I run a pretty lean business. When you're a service provider, I think you can run a lean business if you're just solo. I didn't have team. I I wasn't paying for coaching or anything in that area. So $200 per month and people signing on at that was was great. The next phase was wanting to actually invest in education, in some consulting, coaching, and then branding and marketing, what you were saying, the messaging, I'm a numbers gal that does not come naturally to me. So I knew that there were shifts that I, not only that I needed to make, but that was just outside of, of what I could do and wasn't even worth me DIYing at that point. Mm -hmm. So then the pricing comes into play of, okay, the only way I'm getting this done is by raising my prices again. So I went from $200 to 250 as my base price, but then understood that I could take some services out and add those on as like a next tier. Mm. So then I went to tier a tiered model where not everybody came in at 250 and I gave them everything. Um, okay. <laughs> not the whole kitchen sink anymore. <laughs> exactly. Like it's not the everything, but the kitchen sink cookie. I love that cookie, by the way. Um, <laughs> so yes, it was here's the basic bookkeeping plan. And then here is another option you could have. And I feel like I thrive on that model. It's still kind of the model that I use today. I hired a copywriter to come in and actually interview my clients that I loved and they gave me some messaging. So through all of that, I was able to invest in the business and I was doing profit first where I could take home like a 50% owner's draw and paid my tax. It was glorious. So (laughs) it took... Almost two years though, I would think I started in 2020. I would say the end of 2021 is when I kind of got it all worked out. <laughs> okay. And how did it feel have knowing that it took those two years to get to where it was kind of somewhat sustainable? I didn't have regrets because I always knew I wanted it to be a very organic thing. I wish it would have happened a little quicker. But maybe we all do, I guess, at some point. We all what would it happen. happening quicker have done for you? So if it would have happened quicker, I think I would have invested in the business earlier, which then I think would have propelled uh, more leads to be able to get more income. So I think that that is probably the biggest thing I wish I would have done is that I invested sooner in the certain things that were outside of my zone. Like, Having somebody call me out on my pricing would have been nice, but I think what I needed was to understand the marketing side a lot better. And the only way I was going to get that was either through debt, like taking out a loan or something or increasing my prices. Okay. And so that money that you're, what do you ultimately want that money to be able to do for you, your family, that big picture vision? 
so what do I want it to do? Yes. I, I'm doing it right now, actually. Um, I wanted it to hire a team. Okay. Um, so I have two employees and a subcontractor and that is just all my marketing. And then I have an assistant um, bookkeeper and I have an executive assistant that are basically, well, they're part-time employees. So it's amazing. Like I was able to, to build this to where I get to scale back some of my time and enjoy being with my kids and enjoy the things that I would like to do. So yeah. And then again, pay on my student loan. <laughs> that, that's, kind of, that's kind of it. We've taken vacations with um, the money we've built, you know, retirement funds, all of the things that I probably wouldn't have done if I would have just stayed in the school system. I was just kind of working for that money. And I feel like this is definitely owning a business <clears throat> and also seeing all of my clients and their brilliant minds too is so fun. And I can sneak a little bit from them too sometimes uh, and be like, oh, wow, that's a great idea. I should implement that in my life or my business. So it's yeah. been fun. <laughs> so uh, what I'm hearing overall is pricing your services really helps you to do less. You're taking on less clients. You're making more money. You're able to really do more by doing less. And so thank you. Thank you for sharing that all with us. If someone wants to learn more about you, your bookings, keeping services, how can they reach out? So um, my website is assignedfinancialsolutions.com. Um, and from there, you can find all of our social medias. There's an email list you can join, but that's probably the our home base is our website. Okay, that's awesome. So, so much can go into your pricing structure. However, it's all centered around where you see yourself in your business in the future. So I want you to start making a plan for where you see yourself in the next 90 days, one year and five years. List out the life that you wanna live as if you're living it right now and think of the value that you bring to your clients. There are ways that you can do less while still providing the same high level quality and pricing your services accordingly. This has been an amazing episode of Do Less with me, Shanice Miller. Share this episode with anyone who needs this today. Leave a five-star rating and review. And remember, if you're an entrepreneur and need to do less in your business, click the link in the description to work with me.